Hi, I'm Lisa Valentine, Managing Editor of FSO Knowledge Exchange, and I'm here with Alexi Miller. Alexi is Partner and Executive Vice President with Data Art. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Alexi just finished up a great uh, presentation that covered multi-sourcing and some other topics, and um, we're going to kind of uh, continue on that. Uh, Alexi, it seems like the asset management firms are really making some major changes to how they approach outsourcing. I mean, even transformation, perhaps. Oh, what kinds of changes are you seeing in how they approach outsourcing, and, and what's driving these changes? Absolutely. I, I believe it would be fair to say that in the overall financial services landscape, asset management firms for a long time had this a bit of an arrogant position where they said, we're, we're doing too well, we have too much money, and too, we're moving too fast, we don't really need to outsource. That changed in the past two years, and that changed not because they have been any less successful or had any, any less money, but because the pressure on them from their investor, investor base, and to a certain degree, but less so from the regula regulators, was, um, was increasing by the minute. So uh, they are turning to outside vendors. They're looking to push out various operational technology functions outside of the shop, increasingly so in the last 12 months. And that is driven primarily by their clients who demand better transparency, better return on capital, rather than regulators, which is something that most people talk about, but there's less specificity to that. Great. Well, it seems that um, firms are looking more to multi-vendor uh, outsourcing. Does, it, does that approach differ between smaller size firms and larger size firms? Well, m large firms uh, multi-source by, by default. Smaller size firms should do it more, I, b I believe. There is a misguided often uh, notion that it's very difficult for a small firm to, to manage that efficiently, whereas in reality I think it doesn't take a lot of a lot of work because the standards have been de developed to a large degree. The technology is there, the legal framework is, is there, you can almost pick it up from the internet and you can certainly hire that function. So um, the use of multi-vendor relationship is not as prevalent in the small, small firms as it, as it should be and it will change, it will change fast. Oh, oh great. Um, what about, and you know, another big decision for firms is build or buy. You know, are they going to, um, you know, keep it in house or, or send it out? And I guess I'd want to know, you know, how do they make that kind of buy or build decision? No one likes to make a build decision, or very few people like to make a build decision, I should say. But they are making that more often as we as we speak. The whole um, financial service is an interesting area in that respect because various software packages that are geared towards financial services specifically are ridiculously expensive. They are outrageous in terms of support, in terms of implementation, and in terms of flexibility to, to address changing business, uh, business needs. So th there is a lot of danger in a the, in the build decision and no one likes to make that decision, but people have to because because of the technology development, because of, out, of outsourcing services that are so readily available, build is just a lot easier than it used to be. There's still this aura of risk associated with, with that, but the cost of maintaining a third-party vendor solution is so high, and it only, it only keeps going higher, that you have to invest into your own proprietary systems. And um, because, of, because of technology, like I said, it's not as scary as it used to be, and I, and I think that also will, will continue. At least in our practice, we see, we see it, it gives us great pleasure to do something that people said was impossible to do a year ago. And uh, oftentimes that involves building a piece of software that would replace a packaged product at a certain place, and that happens a lot more now than it used to. Is the decision uh, between buy or build different? depending on the size of the firm and perhaps how much, um, I mean, what goes into that decision? I, I think the biggest factor is the, uh, is the personal background of the people making that decision. Of all the things that go into that consideration, uh, in a surprising number of, of, of cases, it is not logic-based. It is based on the personal uh, risk uh, perception of the individual or group of individuals making that decision. However scientific we want that to be, it is actually not scientific at all. I've seen lots and lots of smaller firms that were 
less than spectacularly equipped in to do custom build, yet still engaged into that, and some of them succeeded, some of them failed. Uh, an observer from the outside would probably say that large firms typically invest into the technology simply because they can afford it, whereas the smaller shops cannot afford it. That's largely not true. Building custom solution has become so much cheaper that even a small shop can afford it. So it is a matter of individuals' background and them being ready to manage that efficient, efficiently. And I think, and I think, people have just they're growing into realization that it's not so terribly difficult to build, and that's why I think it'll increase. Yeah, that, that's really interesting because it used to be if you were a smaller asset management firm, there there was no choice. You you just bought but you're saying that building is a, a very reasonable alternative in a lot of situations. Increasingly so, certainly. You, you used to buy and, be, and proceed to be unhappy about that, and as you grew, you bought the next version or next generation of the solution and proceeded to be unhappy about that, with, with certain important exceptions, of course. And those who've made a decision to invest little by little in, in proprietary technology, I think win in the long, in the long run. What you see, even if you look at some of the larger firms in the asset management business, some of the larger hedge funds, for example, almost without exception, they have invested from, into proprietary technology from early stage. When they were a 200 million shop and then grew into 20 billion organiz organization, uh, that will not be attributed to technology, of course, but they made that decision early on. It is certainly one of the success factors for successful firms. Oh, great. Well, we really do appreciate you joining us here today. I was just wondering if you could say a few a few words about why it's important for um, you know industry participants to come to events such as these. Well, we are in our daily work are too boxed into whatever we have to we have to do. We're too constrained by the limits of our organizations and our client client set. I am a vendor and a consultant, and one can say that my view is enriched by my work with clients, but in any given month I meet maybe with a couple dozen dozen clients and the, the, the world is so different, the industry is so diverse today, it's, it's, it's definitely not enough. So we, sh we, we, we welcome the chance to participate and learn from others and we invite others to learn together with us. It's, it's incredibly important. Even on our panel today there was some, I thought, healthy disagreement uh, and that wouldn't have come out if I maintained my conversations with my clients who by virtue of hiring me, agree with my view of things. So, that, in that sense, that learning aspect is incredibly important. Well, thank you very much, Alexei. I appreciate spending a few times with a few minutes with me today. Okay.